<laughs> and why do they sound like right. they're a 13 year old kid? All right, I, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to use Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. I'm not going to answer even that. If, even if I knew the answer, I'm not telling you. Our question of the day What will be the biggest in game difference what about this us? year? This is the best of BYU Sports Nation. Interviews and insight from this week in Cougar Sports. Every Saturday, only on BYU Radio. To lead off, here's the double coverage interview of the week. Welcome back to the show. You can download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Subscribe, rate, and review. Yeah, that's a future sign. That's actually a future signing for Kalani. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he just can't do it after a touchdown. He's got to go to the sideline. Yeah, the officials are not. Well, looking, he can so go during no a touchdown. Just Kalani won't like it. No, but yeah, no penalty. Yeah, I, I feel Speaking it. of the head coach, Kalani Satake joins us now live over Zoom to talk about yes, the signees, the new coach, quarterback situation. But uh, first and foremost, Kalani, what's this day like for you emotionally right before Christmas? Because there is so much happening on a day like today. Well, they're just really excited. I mean, anytime you can have, uh, uh, you know, young men join the team, join the program, and, and it's not just them. You, you get you get that connection with their entire family, uh, with everyone that loves them in, the, in their high school programs. And, and so the, the family, BYU football family, has just got bigger. Um, and that's always a great time to do it after a bowl game when you have to say you got goodbye to some people. But I'm um, really excited that, that, uh, that, you know, these young men are joining our program. I'm, I'm honored to be their coach and uh, – Thankful that, that uh, we were able to get it done. And, and this is just the beginning. There, there's going to be more coming in, and uh, we'll have some signees trickling in even today. And then uh, between now and February, we'll, we'll have a few more that uh, – well, probably a little bit more than that, that will join us. And so really looking forward to, to having them be part of our, our group and our program and our family. No school has a signing day like BYU for various reasons. It's the high school kids. It's the JUCO, the P5 guys. It's also the return missionaries, which we'll get to later, probably in January. But um, let's talk about the quarterback situation. Certainly there are a few guys perhaps coming to BYU, but that all depends on the decision from Jaron Hall. What's the conversation been like from the coaching staff and you with Jaron about his decision? Well, I think Jaron's looking through what would be the best thing for him, but he's trying to consider all of it. You know, and He and his family are taking their time. And, and um, I think uh, you know if there's a chance for him to come back, he can take all the time he wants. And, and I know that... Uh, there's a lot of people that are impatient with it, but I promise you that uh, if we just give him the time that he that, that he needs to make the right decision, the, the key is to let him feel good about it. And, and if we can just focus on that, I think that that would be the key. Uh, we just want him to know that we love him and we want him here. So, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully he'll he'll make the decision uh, soon. But but I know he'll make the right one. Any concern that if he takes too long, that certain quarterbacks that want to come to BYU may go elsewhere? Well, that's always the concern, but uh, I, I think uh, we have a really good relationship with the guys that we've been talking to. We feel good about our, our program, our depth, and, and the, the possibilities. And so, uh, yeah, I think we're, we'll be okay. Coach, uh, before we get into the individuals and the signees, you announced last night a new defensive line coach, one of your friends who you worked closely with at the University of Utah, and I know he's very close to Jay Hill as well, Sione Pauha. What did it take to get him back to BYU out of retirement and coaching that defensive line group? Well, that guy's that guy's born to be around football, and so um, you know when, when Jay and I were looking at possibilities and who to add, uh, it was it was pretty easy that he was at the top of the list. Um, and then just talking to him and, and, and his wife Katie, you know, we wanted to spend some time uh, letting them know what the program's about, uh, the schedule, uh, our, our basically our, our um, expectations of him. Uh, you know, he he has a a, um, a wonderful life. But uh, I think he, he's looking at this opportunity to, to enhance it and make it even more fulfilled, being that he's going to uh, be able to mentor so many great young men and be involved with our program. Obviously, BYU is unique, and I think uh, what we have, the mission of the church, the mission of our school and our university, uh, aligns exactly with what he's trying to accomplish right now. And uh, really looking forward to him joining our group. And uh, we've had great meetings already. You know, uh, he, he showed up here ready to work, and, and uh, that's all that guy does is work hard, and do it the right way and, and uh, influence people as he goes along. So I'm really, really happy that he's going to be coaching our D-line. Listen, I know BYU, some BYU fans don't want to hear it, but the truth is if you can replicate in some way the effectiveness that the Utah defenses have had for a long time, led by you and helped by Jay Hill and Sione and obviously Kyle, hey, that's great. And there's a lot of sort of influence that direction here, which is super exciting. So my real question is how would you get Sione to come out of retirement? Because that's awesome, man. 
I think the timing worked really well for him and, and uh you know talking to him and his, his family that this is this is what he and his family wanted and um I think he's probably the best one to ask that question to but uh I, I just know that we wanted him here and and um you know we we feel good about it I listen if you want to look back at the roots of football from BYU the air raid all that system that's out there uh the spread the ball out and throw the ball uh, we we were one of the originators that did it here. So, uh, and you look at defensively, uh, we love what Kyle Whittingham has done. I, I, I'm honored that he mentored me in that defense. Um, you have to look at who mentored him, and that's his dad, Big Fred. Big Fred was also a coach here at BYU. So yeah. it's okay. We're all we're all one big family. The 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 roots and the tree extend way further than what people can see right now. Uh, all we're focused on right now is giving uh, the the young men on our team and our and our fans what they deserve, and that's. That's a, a complete defense that can run the run the show and and uh, do a lot of different things, whether it's be aggressive, cover man to man, get guys developed uh, on and off the field, and send them in, in opportunities to accomplish their dreams. That's that's what we're focused on getting up, getting done here. Now, well said from the head football coach BYU Kalani Satake, who's live on BYU Sports Nation. You just mentioned some names are going to be trickling in in that recruiting class. We just got one moments ago. It is Isaiah Bagna, defensive end who is from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. He's a Boise State transfer and a guy that Kelly Papinga worked with and knew very well. I know you and your staff are very excited about the 6'4", 225-pound edge rusher. What can you tell us about Isaiah, Coach? Big-time playmaker. And, and the production shows uh, in, in his ability to make sacks. And so I, uh, I know that uh, he went into the portal. We, we jumped on it quickly. And obviously, K-pop, Knows how to mentor those edge rushers. This guy, he he's big and strong and athletic, and you know he wants to wants to be here for the right reasons, and and um, we're excited for him to be here, part of our group. Twenty career sacks, I love that. Okay, another guy that uh, came in, Tui Pututau, six five two sixty defensive lineman out of Salt Lake, and uh, West High School three star recruit, mission first guy, committed on a visit, real big dude. Tell us about Tui. Yeah, big strong. I mean, you, you recognize the last name. Uh, just from a long line of, of athletic and strong brothers. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to him. Obviously going to go on a mission first, but uh, just really proud that, that we were to get him here at BYU, get him on campus. I think once his family uh, and he were able to be here and then connect with people other than just football, uh, they felt really comfortable and I'm really excited to invite him to our program as well. Coach, I do want to go back to the running back room. We've talked a lot about Aiden Robbins and what he brings from UNLV as a thousand plus yard rusher. What's he going to do in this BYU offense? Well, I mean, the proof is what he does already with the ball in his hands. And and uh, what I like about him is that he's willing to learn and get better. And and uh, his football IQ is ridiculous. I mean, he's so smart when it comes to the game of football. Uh, and then he, you know, we we had a chance at him. In, in high school and it came down to us in Louisville. And so it, it, it's interesting how things come back around and now he's here and he's bigger than, than he's been, but uh, has tons of athleticism and speed, but he's always looking for ways to get better. And I, I think we're going to get a, a great version of, uh, of Aiden and, and looking forward to him working with our offense, working with Harvey, working with A-Rod and Fessy and the whole group. And, and uh, he's excited about our alignment too. He was able to watch our practices and so it's like, man, there's a lot of great young depth there. So he's really excited about about being able to run behind them, but also just pitching in whatever he, he can do. I know that he's looking at the different roles that he can bring, leadership. Um, and he's here for the right reasons. He wants to be part of the BYU culture, be part of the honor code, be involved with, with what BYU has to offer and looking forward to, to becoming a better player and a better person because of it. I want to ask you about a couple of incoming uh, freshmen who will play right away in Siale Isera and Jackson Bowers, uh, linebacker, perhaps uh, DN, and a tight end. Yeah, I mean, Jackson Bowers is a big time tight end. He, he's uh, uh, big and strong, and, and if you look at his body, he's ready to play right now. And so we're, we're looking forward to him uh, doing things for us early, and um, he can do it all. He, he, he can catch, he can, he can block, he can. And he's got great athleticism, can run, and he's a big, big size kid. And so um, just a really great young man to be around him and his family. Uh, looking forward to him doing his work here, man. We've had, uh, you know, that, that that town of Mesa has done some great things to get us some good players. And so uh, really excited that he's he's part of our, our family as well. Um, and then Siali Sarah's, you know, right here, local product, a big time recruit. That, that had and Both these guys had a bunch of offers, and we had to fight a bunch of guys off to, to get them here. But 
um, I think they, they chose the school for the right reasons. And, and it's not just because of the, the coaches and, and, and the scheme. It's because they, they're, they're connected to the, the church. They're connected to, to what this place is all about. And, and I, th- I think they see the, the type of person that they'll be uh, doing their time here for four to five years. And so um, Seattle will compete both he and, he and Jackson will compete right away for, for playing time. Um, seattle has got a, 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 he's really big, so he can play a lot of different positions. And, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see, he can play linebacker. He can play outside linebacker inside. He can play D and he can play whatever you, whatever we need him to. He's willing to do that, but I think we'll start him at the linebacker first and see how everything progresses from there. But with that versatility, you can use him in a lot of different roles and uh, you can see some of the things that we can do with disguises and blitzes and scheme that I think Jay Hill is going to have a lot of fun with him. That was one of our favorite interviews this week. You're listening to the best of BYU Sports Nation. This is the best of BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio. On a normal day, we would typically roll out the what's trending open. But then again, this isn't just any normal day now, is it? It is the early signing period for college football, and we are about to introduce you to each and every one of the official signees for BYU. So, all rise and shout. It's time to meet the newest class of BYU Cougars. And we begin with Jackson Bowers, big-time tight end out of Mesa, Arizona, Mountain View. Everybody wanted this guy. Four-star, number 22 tight end prospect in the country. Look at the list of schools that wanted him. Alabama, SC, LSU, Oregon, Texas, that school up north. Here's Steve Clark, the tight ends coach, on Jackson Bowers. Jackson Bowers from Mesa Mountain View High School, go Toros. I'm supposed to do that, I guess. Uh, Four-star athlete, four-star recruit, everybody in the nation. He had an offer from everybody in the nation. We're fortunate to get him. Look forward to having him in the fall. We'll get him in and get him going. BYU did a great job of beating out a lot of good programs. Obviously, Mountain View and Mesa is a school that's produced a lot of notable BYU players in a lot of sports uh, namely Max Hall and John Beck uh, at the quarterback position historically. Guy who can block in line, he can flex out. He will be here in the summer and play next fall, and he fits right into that room, Spence, to where Isaac Rex is back yes. and Ethan Erickson and others, where Jackson Bowers can get some real playing time uh, right away as a freshman. I'm stoked for the highest-rated prep recruit in this BYU football signing class to learn from the likes of Isaac Rex, who announced earlier this week that he's coming back for one more year. Love the tight end room at BYU football right now. I also love another four-star. This one, according to the Rivals uh, recruiting website. His name is Siale Acera. Summer enrollee, not a mission guy right now. Big-time linebacker out of Timthew High School in Provo, Utah. Here is Kelly Papinga on what Siale will bring to the field for the Cougars. Siale Acera, uh, local product right in our backyard. Big physical linebacker that uh, flies around from sideline to sideline and uh, is a versatile player, can play anywhere in the front seven. So we're super fired up to get CLA with us. Now he's, again, listed as a linebacker at 250, and Kelly Papinga just pointed out the dude can absolutely fly from sideline to sideline. But there are a few in the BYU defensive staff room that like him as an edge rusher. They see him as a Harvey Longy type, moving from linebacker up to the hybrid defensive end position. And they expect him to be an early contributor, all in on BYU, liked his visits to Southern California, specifically UCLA, maybe a little bit of wavering there, got locked in by the BYU staff, and now Asara is at BYU. So Bowers, Asara, a couple of four stars, really, really nice start to this signing class. Absolutely, and Siale was who you were referring to a couple of weeks ago. People thought it was... He was? Snowden Smith, uh, <laughs> Smith Snowden, Snowden, excuse me. But yes, uh, Siale uh, is the guy. Yes, lock down the tip, you kids that want to be at BYU. And uh, Siale is the next in the line of amazing Thunderbirds who have played for the Cougars. He's going to be an impact guy who's going to come into a linebacker room where there are a few opportunities for more playing time. We'll see exactly what the future looks like with some announcements from guys, whether Keenan Peely stays. Uh, we expect Max Tooley back. Pey- Peyton Wilgar perhaps goes to the NFL, perhaps comes back, right? He hasn't announced what he's saying. There will be some opportunities, I think, in that room. Ben Bywater is the leader of that group coming back. I love that BYU got a guy that had interest from UCLA, Tennessee, Michigan, Utah, USC. Winning those recruiting battles is always important, especially in your backyard, because we've seen, and this will happen, Utah football is better now, Spence, is 
People come in and grab the kids that traditionally used to go to BYU a long time ago. But if you can get guys like Siala Yacera, that is awesome because he's going to have an impact uh, very quickly at BYU, I think. Yeah, yeah. Siala was highly sought after, as was Jackson Bowers. I mean, we heard Steve Clark say, everybody wanted Bowers. A when I see of- Alabama on there, I go, hey, Holy that's cow. awesome. A bunch of people wanted Siala. Now two four-stars locked in at BYU. Really, really solid. Okay, another linebacker, Owen Borg, out of Corner Canyon High School in Draper. Of course, Corner Canyon, we know well. Lots of uh, products coming out of there. Great football. Those guys compete for state titles every year, produce D1 products. Three-star guy, nearly 100 tackles, five picks. Great athlete, heavily recruited as well. And here is Kelly Papinga again on Owen Borg. Owen Borg, great linebacker from Corner Canyon High School. This is a BYU guy that will be a physical linebacker for us and really do anything that we need him to do. Uh, Great special teams player and uh, fired up to see this guy fly around for the Cougars. He's got some speed, competing in the 4x400 relay as a junior in high school, one state, inside linebacker type. He's been coming to camps for several years. BYU guy, mission first yeah. for Owen, so we, he, we will see him in a couple of years. By the time he comes back, the hope is that BYU is in position to not just compete in the Big 12, but perhaps challenge for conference championships uh, You know, as BYU gets settled into that league. To me, he feels like the prototypical linebacker in the history of BYU football. Very, very intelligent Very bought into what the Cougars bring to the table and the history involved here. When you're recruited by Penn and Columbia, I mean, come on. You're going to class, too. Yes. (laughs) This is is a guy that the coaches will will not have to stay up late at night worrying about at all. He will do what he's supposed to do. He will be all in in all the team meetings. I really like Owen Borg, and I can't wait for him to work with Kelly Papinga. Really, really nice get. And Corner Canyon continues to add linebackers, right? Uh, you got the Wilson brothers in there as well. That's right. Absolutely. Okay, so now we move on to, we may as well keep it in the linebacker room, Pearson Watson, 6'3", 210 pounds out of Flagstaff, Arizona, in that linebacker room. And Pearson is a guy that is another three-star LDS mission first kid, but he's got some lineage that we'll talk about in just a minute. In fact, let's hear from Kelly Papinga on this legacy Cougar. Pearson Watson. Great linebacker that comes from us from Arizona and has a great bloodline of uh, uncles that played for us in the past, Jaden Wagner and Aaron, Aaron Wagner. And so excited to get another one of these guys playing for us in the linebacker core here at Brigham Young. Linebacker lineage. How about that, Jaden and Aaron Wagner? Hey, they're looking at Pearson. Super proud of him today as he joins K-pop. And it just, I mean, I know it's only been a few days since Kelly Papinga has been back. But it's fun to hear him talk about this new recruiting class and to have him back in Provo. I think he's going to make a massive difference coaching those guys up. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Clune did a tremendous job the last couple of years as well. Kelly Papinga knows BYU, knows BYU backers. This has never been a position that's been a struggle for BYU. The Cougars are always able to get good linebackers. And it's fun to talk about uh, Sarah and uh, Borg and now Watson is kind of the next line of that. Of course, we'll see Pearson Watson in a couple of years. But we loved Aaron and Jaden Wagner several years ago, and so he comes from that line. And so you just trust right away yeah. when you hear, yeah, he's, he's from the Cougar. Wagners. Oh, he's, he's ready to Absolutely. go. And I should note, now while Kelly is talking about the linebackers, and certainly we'll have some input, there could be some shuffling on the defensive staff. We don't know all. There's one more defensive coach that needs to be hired, and it could involve – coaching the linebackers, so we'll see. And we'll see what, uh, you know, Jay Hill decides to coach himself. Exactly that, right. That sort of dictates this. You'd think Gennaro um, at, at uh, you know, corners. You'd think Sione at D-line. So we'll see. Kelly Papinga certainly would make sense at linebacker, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And Jay coached safeties very successfully for a long time at the University of Utah and you'd, specialized in at Weaver think State as well. That could be where so he may, lives. maybe he's yeah. the guy that's coaching up the safeties. Okay, next up, a lot of, lot of questions about quarterbacks. Now, this guy was going to sign regardless of Jaron Hall's decision, but Ryder <laughs> Burton out of Springville, three-star, is here. Now, he doesn't have stats that, like, blow your mind. They didn't feature him in the offense per se, but uh, heavily recruited as well. Utah, TCU, UCLA, you like seeing that on there. Ryder Burton has been coming to BYU for a minute uh, to camps, to practices even this year. Here's Aaron Roderick on one of the next quarterbacks at BYU. Ryder Burton, um, great arm talent. Came to our camp a few years in a row. Um, we just love how he throws the ball. He's accurate. He has a strong arm, and uh, he has a lot of confidence. 
Yes, he does. Uh, big arm talent. He's been working with John Beck, so even in high school, he's kind of taking the craft seriously, right? He's coming in January. Enrolling early, he will be here for spring ball. He's going to compete right away. Certainly the decision of Jaron Hall dictates a lot of how this is going to go with other quarterbacks in the room, but we know for sure that Ryder Burton is part of the future of BYU at, at this position. <laughs> you want to talk about ultra-confident? I'm legitimate when I say this. Ryder Burton expects to show up, and he's like, I'm going to be the starter next year. Like, that's that's the type of confidence we're talking about. It doesn't matter you who's like coming You like that sort of sports naivety? Watch um, this throw. Watch this throw. If you're on BYU TV. Hey. And, and we love a good floating left, throwing right. Zach Wilson, Pro Day, Ryder Burton, yes. huddle film throw. Do we not? <laughs> no, he, like, legitimately, you ask him, he's like, no, I'm going to be good enough that I, I'm going to start. And let's be honest, Kay, it's, it's, if Jaron Hall comes back, he's the guy, right? Cade Fennigan still in the mix, Ryder Burton there. We'll see what happens with Sol, Sol J. Maiava Peters' uh, future, right? Certainly a runner. May, maybe not the thrower that BYU traditionally has as a starter, so not sure he's starter material with the arm, but certainly kind of a, a change of pace quarterback in the room if he's still there, right? And then if Jaron leaves, you expect a P5 and perhaps a Juco guy to come in with Ryder. So we're still waiting for that very important decision of Jaron Hall. We'll talk to Kalani Stocky later in the program about sort of the timing of that. Is, is he announcing? What kind of uh, positive pressure are you putting on him to uh, go either way, yet you want him to come back? Ryder Burton was going to come here regardless, but there are other quarterbacks sitting there waiting on the Jaron Hall decision of whether they're going to come to BYU or not. The best of BYU Sports Nation will be back after this on BYU Radio. Get caught up in the week in Cougar Sports. This is the best of BYU Sports Nation. The early signing period has taken over for that very it's famous first Wednesday in February. It I guess to be it's February. like yeah. totally surpassed that now. February is like, we added a couple more guys. Here they are. This is awesome. But remember <laughs> the guys from December? Yes. And, and perhaps, um, barring a quarterback, the most influential player in this class is this next guy, Aiden Ooh. Robbins Ooh. out of UNLV. The running back, y'all. This guy's 6'3", 230. Played a couple years at Louisville sparingly. UNLV, 1,000-yard rusher last year, nine touchdowns. This guy is a beast. Here's Harvey Unga on Aiden Robbins. Aiden Robbins, um, another big uh, physical dominant running back. Um, did a lot of great things uh, for UNLV. Excited to have him. Uh, another guy that, you know, as big as he is, he's very nimble on his feet, um, but also another speedster uh, is able to take, you know, take it to the house, making the uh, the home runs, and um, excited to watch him just uh, keep keep on furthering his career in this, and, and uh, excited for him to come out here and play for the Cougs. Three years ago, BYU went really hard after Aiden Robbins out of high school in Louisville. Didn't get him. Played for the Cardinals, uh, then transferred to UNLV. Offensive line wasn't great at UNLV, yet he got 1,000 yards. He's got two years of eligibility. He'll be here in January, uh, recruited by some SEC schools, uh, Ole Miss in there, South Carolina, Kentucky, Missouri. So uh, he's the next guy as BYU continues to go get guys that have been at Power Fives in uh, Chris Brooks uh, and now in Aiden Robbins. Now, Chris was injured at times. Chris uh, was good, but could have been better on third and fourth uh, and short a little bit. We hope Aiden Robbins is the guy that is sort of what we're hoping Chris would be from last year. Yeah, really, really important and impactful player. And when it comes to, like, plug and play, like, yeah, aside from quarterback, it's this dude, right? Absolutely. If Jaron's gone, there's another name that we're hoping to announce here. But uh, Aiden Robbins is going to have a huge influence on the success of BYU football in its first year as an independent or in the Big 12. Yeah, and out of independent. You know, and I, I I heard a couple people say, well, yeah, a thousand yards, but in the Mountain West, and it's like, no, no, like that UNLV line was not 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 good, tremendous, not good. The fact that he got a thousand is it, it's very impressive. Also, yes. which BYU quarterback got a thousand last year um, with the good offensive line? You know what I mean? Like a thousand yards is something. I don't I don't really care who you play for. A thousand is notable. So, again, I love the previously established connection. I think BYU does a really, really good job with this, with players that opt to go to other schools. BYU has established this idea of, look, we, we're going to congratulate them, support them, wherever they go. Yeah, we're disappointed that they don't initially pick BYU, but the BYU coaches are really good at this, at leaving the door open if an opportunity comes back up. And with the transfer portal in play, that's going to happen and is happening more and more, which allowed for a guy that they wanted badly three years ago and thought they were going to get. I mean, they, they, thought, they thought they were very close 
So super disappointing when he went to Louisville, but now he's back with two years of eligibility. So a credit to the coaches for keeping that connection open and being available and willing. And as soon as he popped into the portal, it was like, let's talk right now. He's To me, he's clearly RB1 going into next year. Oh, for sure. Uh, like for no sure. doubt, right? Yes. So it's, it's super exciting that he'll be here for spring ball. He can get ready, develop that rapport with whoever the quarterback is, whether that be Jaron Hall or – P5 or a Juco guy, or maybe it's Ryder Burton like we talked about. Like, <laughs> Ryder's like, let's go, baby! But n- don't burn bridges in recruiting. Like, some people do that, or even in life and, and work and jobs and whatever. Don't burn bridges because you don't know what opportunities you may want later. BYU didn't with Aiden Robbins, and boom goes the dynamite. Aiden yes. Robbins is going to be a guy that we hope can get 1,000 yards next year at BYU. It pays off. Now, the running back room, they needed to shore that up. Another huge emphasis for BYU in this recruiting class, length. Uh, and athleticism, specifically on the defensive line. And we present David Tangi Lanu, 6'5", 255 pounds, out of East Palo Alto, California. David is 17 years old right now. He doesn't turn 18 until November of 2023. So we'll see you in 2026, David, because <laughs> he, is an, he is a mission, mission first, first guy. guy. Okay, so super young has been playing up with an older group uh, when he's going to try and go on his mission as early as possible, but an imposing presence as young as he is right now. 6'5", 255 right now. He just turned 17. So you're and, banking on what he can become. Yes. Which a, is what recruiting budding is. Budding gem. But uh, the defensive line coach, Sione Pauha, is understandably very excited about what he is going to be able to work with especially with, uh, as I said, the budding gem that David Tangilangu is. Yeah, love that. David Tangilangu. David Tangilangu. He was, uh, he came here to camp. He was a young kid. He's only 17 years old. He's freaking competitive. He's got a big frame. He's physical. And we feel like he's got a ton of upside. We love the kid. We can't wait for him to be a cougar. Yeah, and that means something coming from Jan Jorgensen. He played some rugby, too, David did, so he knows how to actually tackle. Um, <laughs> Dad played professional rugby as well. The true tackling is in rugby. In football, you're a missile that you hope doesn't get called for targeting. That's, that, that's what happens. The purest form of tackling happens in rugby. <laughs> yes, it does, in my biased opinion. Uh, okay, next up, quarterback Jaden Dunlap out of uh, Cerritos College. Juco guy, transfer, two years of eligibility. First team all-conference, 6'1", 180. Here's Gennaro Guilford on Jaden Dunlap. Jaden Dunlap, who's a man corner, um, has a knack for the ball, one of the most underrated corners uh, in uh, California, uh, a JC all, All-State guy. Um, definitely, definitely has speed, cover skills to come help us out. He's going to be here in January. Uh, you know, teams didn't really throw at him a ton, committed on his visit, and uh, BYU has, has mined JCs for... DBs for a long time now, and Gennaro yes. knows this himself uh, as a guy who came to BYU uh, from a JC and uh, was really good, really good um, you know, as a player, and he understands BYU culture. Jaden Dunlap will fit in that room just nicely. Now, the head coach at Cerritos has a good relationship with Gennaro and straight up said, look, trust me when I say this. I know that people haven't thrown at him a lot. There's a reason they're not throwing at him a lot. He is 100% a Big 12 player. You need to lock this dude down. So that's why Gennaro says he's underrated. It's going to be thrown out a lot in the Big 12. They chuck it. So (laughs) get ready. All over the field. So, yeah, that relationship with the Cerritos College staff and Gennaro, like they're putting some trust in that, saying, hey, he's a dude. He is absolutely a Big 12 player. So excited to see him develop uh, as as he comes over to BYU. On we go back to the defensive line, this time with Simone Davis. Simone... LDS as well, mission first kid. He's going to leave on that mission in March, so he will, uh, he'll get to go early and then come back and be available for the summer of, I'm doing that, 2025. Okay, so this is a 2025 guy. By then, BYU will in the, be in the college football playoff. <laughs> Expanded. No Texas and Oklahoma at that point. Three-star <laughs> guy, according to 24-7 Sports. First team All-State tight end. Most of his offers... From West Virginia, Kansas, Kansas State, Virginia, Indiana, and others came as a tight end. BYU wants him as a defensive end. We'll see. You know, they they want to move him to the defense side of the ball. But the most important part is he said, I'll play whatever position. I just want to be at BYU. 
And uh, again, athletic family, his sisters, uh, two of his sisters, high level volleyball players as well. Simone Davis joined that defensive line group uh, out of Haula, Hawaii, and Colleyville Heritage High School. Jan Jorgensen, once again, this time on specifically the size that Simone brings. Simone Davis, man, this guy's huge. He's big. Um, massive frame, good athlete for his size and his age. When he fills out, he's going to be a monster. We can't wait to get him to be a Cougar. Okay, there you go. Three, hey, another three-star guy. And he played high school in Texas. Um, lists Hawaii as the hometown, but played in Texas. So, yeah, those, those t- you know, if you, if you got that quick twitch, um, you can play D-end or tight end or whatever, but you see his ability to get out and make that tackle right there against a Texas football competition, you like it. This is the best of BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio. The best of BYU Sports Nation collects our favorite conversations and brings them to you every Saturday. We are now thrilled to have with us in Studio B one of the newest members of the BYU football team. He is a four-star yeah. recruit, a linebacker, big-time get for BYU football at a Timpview High School in Provo, Utah, Siale Acera. Siale, welcome What's up, man? to BYU Sports Nation. Oh, thank you for having me on the show, man. It's a, it's a pleasure. What were the last 24 hours like for you with this thing going official and you finally being able to say, I am now a member yeah. of the BYU football team? You know, honestly, it was surreal. Um, it was surreal to me because going up, I've always been a BYU fan. I've lived, I lived, I bleed blue growing up, you know, I lived not so far away from the stadium, went to almost every game, home game that I could. Um, and now to just think that I'd be signing and be playing in that same field that I grew up watching was just surreal to me. And it was just, when I, when I signed that pen, um, that pen to paper, it was just, it was like a dream come true, you know, so it was great. Was it a no brainer or did it become tough? Because I'm sure there were other schools that were uh, heavily recruiting you as well. You know, going throughout going throughout that process, it was it it really did like pull me in like different ways. To be honest, I, I won't I won't lie about that. It, it really did pull me in different ways. But I knew deep down in my heart that BYU was the right place for me, like through and through. So what's it like being? Are you what are you? Seventeen? Eighteen? Eighteen. Yes. Eighteen. Okay. What's it like being an eighteen year old kid in the era of name, image, likeness? In the era of open everything? Like w- what does pull at you? What what interests you? What do you care about and what mattered to you in this process? Uh, going into this process, especially with the new um, NIL deals, going, going haywire and rucking up mess inside of the recruiting business um, in college football, it was truly, it was a different experience than I thought it would be going into this recruiting experience. Um, it, did, it did pull me and sway me a little bit, not going to lie, money, money does that to you. Um, and, uh, but going through, talking to my parents and everything, we said that, First of all, a scholarship is for my education. You know, getting a degree was called, was my first goal um, ever since I got the scholarship. And so, even with the NIL deals, I feel like it did it did sway me somewhat. But I felt like no matter no matter what happened or what I went through in this recruiting process, I felt like BYU was always anchoring me home. So. And it is interesting because once you graduate, money is the factor, yes. right, in a job. Um, and now it's partially the factor uh, in college football, depending on where you go and whatnot. But as an 18-year-old, did you feel like you had to grow up quick with a lot of this stuff coming at you? Uh, I, think, I think a little bit, you know, it, it, a little bit. I feel like you had to mature enough to focus on your goals and not get swayed by certain details and certain things that people were throwing at you. So in that sense, I feel like you did have to grow up a little bit faster. But, you know, it's 18 years old, it's still 18. You know, it's not, it's not you haven't hit the 20s yet, you know what I mean? But <laughs> You should be able to have some fun. Yeah, you got time, you got time, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, it's been nice. He is Siali Sarah, new recruit for BYU football on BYU Sports Nation. You mentioned... It's surreal to sign on the dotted line and know that you're going to play in the stadium you grew up going to. But now you're doing it in the Big 12 Conference. Hey, oh, yes. good timing. And BYU is a Power 5 program. So how much did that influence what you were going to do and help you to kind of lock in on BYU knowing that things are moving in a different direction? Yes, no, yeah, most definitely. Like, going into the Big 12 played a big part. I feel like going into the Big 12, coming out of independence, it truly did play a big role in me staying home and staying home and being here and being able to play here. Um, going into that Big 12 conference, it's, 
it's, it's going to be big. It's going to be big for BYU, especially for our team, the way we're going to have to adapt to a new style of play, um, especially with the more of a power offense that those Big 12 teams run. I feel like we're going to have to play more downhill, more physical. Um, I, I feel like that's what Coach Hill and Coach Pop and Coach Buha are going to bring, bring to this defense, and so I'm excited. Okay, talk to me about that defensive staff and what influence they had on you because certainly as a defensive player, once that staff is sort of in limbo, that could be concerning. But BYU hires Jay Hill, and I know he visited your house. How was that visit? That visit was amazing, man. We had a very in-depth conversation about um, just being here and the traditions that BYU has and um, the values and the standards that BYU holds its players to. Um, we also went along and talked about the defense that he's bringing along with um, more of a downhill defense, a lot, a lot of pressure in the QB more. Um, there's not, not, not going to be much, so much drop eight anymore, you know, but uh, more of an attacking a QB from that type of standpoint. Um, I feel like that's going to be big going into this Big 12, um, this Big 12 scheme that we're going into. Um, that Big 12 scheme is big because, man, those teams, their line is huge, you know. They like to run it down your throat. They like to run power. They're... They're very physical, so I feel like everything that they bring to the table defensively is amazing. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that we'll do good. Music to your ears, right? As a yes. linebacker, <laughs> you're like, yes. Yeah, yes. it's a key word from Jay Hill. We keep hearing attack, attack, yes. attack. Yeah. You know, let the big dogs eat, right? Those, yep. those are phrases that resonate. You are listed as a linebacker, but yes. I know that Coach Pua is like, <laughs> mm, maybe I want Ciala as an edge rusher. <laughs> yes. How do you feel about the idea of being a hybrid guy and moving positions potentially? You know, I just. Going into freshman year, I feel like anything that I could do to be prepared and stay ready to whatever comes at me, throw it on, throw it on the field or I practice, I feel like the biggest thing for me is just I just want to be prepared and ready to whatever happens. So, The best of BYU Sports Nation will be back after this on BYU Radio. This is the best of BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio. BYU got news of a new assistant coach joining the staff, and he is with us now in Studio B. Sione Puha, welcome to BYU Football and BYU Sports Nation. Welcome. Awesome. Thanks for having me. We're excited to be here. My family's excited to be here, so uh, you know, we're ready to roll. Hey, you, you were retired, and then you got brought out of retirement. This must have been some kind of offer for you. What, what brought you out of retirement? Yeah, you know, had, a, had a great experience, uh, you know, with, uh, with Utah where I was at and, and coaching there and just had a great experience. And there was just some things in, in, in my family. My family was in transition, had a missionary leaving, had a senior uh, in high school and wanted really to be present. Um, and so kind of just merged away from that. And then, uh, like they say, as doors swing open and close, other ones open. And uh, Kalani and Jay Hill s sought this opportunity. And I thought it was a great opportunity. My family thought it was a great opportunity. Um, and now that thought has turned into, as we know now, as we know it is a great opportunity. So we're happy to be here. Is it weird wearing the Y? I mean, you wore, wore the U for a while. You've come over to this side now? Not weird at all. Okay, you know, there's, good. Because yeah, you look good yeah, in blue. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, there's, there's, that, there's that book title that says, Be Where Your Feet Are, right? And so this yes. is where we're at. And uh, we're happy to be a part of it. I love that. Sione Puja, defensive line coach, and I, I got to be honest with you. We haven't said that officially, right? The team hasn't, but that's the <laughs> assumption. That's the assumption. We believe he's the defensive yeah. line Why coach. Would you know what? I know a little bit about safeties, too, so you never know, right? I could go back there, cover yeah. two, cover three. You've got a great relationship with Jay. You could probably talk yourself into whatever you want to coach. <laughs> he talks a lot. I want to do safeties. Yeah, it's it's all good. Okay, so I'm going to rewind to last week in Albuquerque, and I'm talking with some of the coaches. I'm not going to say names because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but they, they didn't tell me that it was you that they were bringing on, but he's, he said to me, Spencer, I am so amped about <laughs> – who we are bringing in <laughs> fill in the these spots. Like, I'm so excited who's going to be working with us. Like, so to find out that it was you and know that you had that type of support from all of those staff members, what does that mean to you? Well, I think we were equally excited as well. Uh, you know, when, when there were talks about, uh, you know, when Jay gave me a call initially like two or three weeks ago, uh, Kalani gave us a call. We were able to visit with him. Uh, we were just as equally as excited. And so just to know that that kind of works on both, both ends, I think makes for a great, uh, great merger, a great partnership, a great team, and, and we're all in. You coached some of the greatest defensive lines that not just Utah had, but that the nation had there for several years, uh, you know, especially 18 to 21. Those groups were dynamic. A bunch of those guys are still in the NFL. What is it from that experience that you feel like 
hopefully you can put here at BYU to have equally good defensive lines. Right. It's, it's really understanding the process, right, and, and the different metrics it takes for, for development. Uh, we, on Saturdays, you, you just see the, the final product, right? But there's a process that takes place all the way from January to that point. And, you gotta, and, and really understanding those, uh, those measurables, measuring them constantly, following up, uh, helping them develop, providing the support for them to develop, to perform on Saturday. It's really understanding that process. And so uh, myself being, uh, being a product of it as a player and being able to deliver that as a coach is something that, that uh, is valuable and, and hope to bring all, all in here at BYU. How is NIL impacting how the recruiting process will take shape? Uh, I, you know, I, it's, it's just another element of the recruiting process, right? And so the faster we learn how to adapt to it, the faster we learn how to uh, use it for our advantage, uh, the better it'll help us, right? It, it, we're, we're so used to the old way of doing things, and it's probably not going to go back. So uh, let's not return back to that, right? And say, oh, you know, those were the days or back in the days. No, it's, it's a new era. It's a, it's a new element of the game. And the faster we adapt to it and use it for our advantage and know how we can play it to, to our advantage, that'll help us in the recruiting process. And we heard from Siale. It certainly swayed him in, in the process of, ah, it's hard not to look at that, right? But ultimately chose BYU, which is awesome. Today the news is out of the Royal Blue, a new collective officially with the university, which yeah. is exciting. Um, but th this new scheme, more attack, more, you know, and every new coach wants to say they're going to do something faster and better. Like, no one's saying let's slow it down, rarely, right? We, for a while with the scheme, we've been told that uh, defensive linemen are uh, block eaters. Linebackers will come up and make a play. Mm -hmm. It feels like perhaps more will be expected in terms of havoc from the defensive line with this new scheme? Yeah, I mean, every, every, every scheme is, you know, based on, will be based on Kalani and will also be based on Jay Hill, right? I would like to think it as, uh, those are the schematic guys, right? My job as a position coach is to make sure it's sharp, that it's executed, right? That, that every particular part of their technique is executed so that when these coaches call it, they can depend that we'll be able to deliver uh, in terms of technique-wise and executing what we're supposed to do. So what and is it, it yeah. Well, go, I'm go gonna ahead. ask you, what is it like to work with Jay Hill and and but be here on the BYU side. What what do we not know about him as a coach? Jay, well, he has an infectious smile, right? You know that already. Uh, super passionate. Uh, my first interaction with Jay, I was a freshman at Utah while he was a senior, so I got to see him from that spectrum of wow, that you know, those are the senior class. And then him and his wife were—he uh, he was a GA, and him and his wife were just helping us in terms of the Fiesta Bowl when we went there. And so, just to see their interaction and their relationship, and obviously unique to—not uh, unique, but as everybody kind of seen when when his family had had a challenge with with his wife going through that, right? It kind of just drew. Mm -hmm. It, it accentuated who he was uh, from the core, right? No surprise at all. And so to be able to see that, understand it, and want to emulate it yourself makes you just draw more to him. And, and for me, um, that draws a, a special bond between us and him uh, because of who he is and what he does and, and how he lives his life. Yeah, she's a cancer survivor, which is yes, uh, absolutely. incredible, right? Absolutely. Okay, in terms of uh, scheme in the D-line, certainly fans want sacks. They want havoc. They want all the takeaways. The ball comes out quicker nowadays. Um, yeah. There are certain times where, you know, drop eight works in a certain situation, sometimes where it doesn't or whatever. What can fans expect from this defense in terms of uh, a scheme? Or, but, and what's real given Big 12 offenses too, which will be a new challenge? Yeah, I mean, you, you get into the P5, you get into the Big 12, and, and you know, that's where, where they put on, uh, put on your big boy pants, and, and they're just going to, it's really just squat whack, rack versus squat whack. And so uh, as we go through the season, uh, in terms of training in the January, and, that, and that's what it's really about: is to get our guys to be leaner, faster, stronger, to be able to be able to compete against those different offenses. So, you know, what you can expect is definitely a tough culture, a physical culture, and a skilled culture, especially from the D line. And we've established that yesterday in a meeting that we have. Really, is just tough, physical, and skilled. And you put those, uh, we put those together. And that's what we build in January, not what we build on on game week Monday. That's what we build in January. We come in, and that's pretty much our values. That's our focus. Because when we come that day, if we become the best. Skilled, we become the best physical and become the best tough uh, defensive front, then we'll be able to, to, to put something good on the field. He is a defensive assistant coach. We've not made anything I official about like positions yet. Anything but <laughs> Whatever. It's not, it's not we'll official. Say it. You didn't say it. Sione Puha with us on BYU Sports Station.
What do you know about the personnel that you inherit on the current roster? I know it's early, but what do you yeah. know about the personnel? Yeah, super early. We had I had you know, I came into the office yesterday and uh, had some of our players that were still on campus come in and be able to talk to them, and they're hungry. I know that for sure. They're hungry to get better. They're hungry to get pushed. They're hungry to learn the scheme. They're hungry to to take it all in. So it was so good to be here, be able to feel that from them. Um, we had our, our first 45 minutes was just me listening to their story. Like, what is it? Uh, some of the questions that I asked that really gave me some good insight was not, and there's basic questions like, you know, why, why what's your why to football? But one of the important questions I asked him was like, what's your relationship with football? Because I really mm. wanted to understand what that relationship was and strengthen that relationship so that now it's more inner driven from them. So really a lot of listening on my part to feel who they are, feel what's important to them. And as many coaches, a lot of coaches have like different specialties, like, oh, I'm a technique guy or I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a X's and O's guys and have different types of, of uh, specialties. For me, I told my guys this year, I'm a you guy. You know, I coach you and whatever you're good at and whatever you're well at and what are your deficiencies, I'm not going to put you into this box, but I'm going to see what you're good at, add to it, and, and make sure that you become better at the deficiencies that you do have currently. And that's Y-O-U, not the letter U, just to be clear. Y-O-U, <laughs> yes. I'm just kidding. Okay, yes. in the transition to a Power 5, certainly you were at Utah after your time in the NFL, mainly with the Jets, right? What is it that um, – took Utah um, some time and then eventually led to conference championships that hopefully BYU can expedite in some way in the Big 12 because independence kind of ramped up those schedules a little more than the G5 originally. Right. Just getting our processes down, understanding our culture, having a process that houses and uh, that drives the culture and then continue just to repeat it over and over and over. And then getting our players, uh, the players that we have in rosters and players that come in, when they come in, there's already an environment where it fosters the, the thriving and winning success, the traditions that, that we have here at BYU and the things that are going to be built. That wraps up the best of BYU Sports Nation this week. Tune in next Saturday for the Cougar news you need to hear. And catch the BYU Sports Nation simulcast every day at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on BYU TV and BYU Radio.